last four months. He's been fighting prostate cancer for eight or ten years. And then now he's got bone cancer and he went through all that treatment. And then he started pissing blood. Oh. And uh, he's back in the hospital in Oklahoma City in the ER. And I don't know what happened, but they, they left and went to a hospital in Edmond. And uh, they immediately gave him two units of blood. But when he was in Oklahoma City, his reading was 7.1 and Medicare won't pay for it unless it's 7.0 or less. But, but anyhow, he, he wasn't getting any better. So he saw a urologist yesterday, or a couple days ago, and she took him in for her outpatient business down in the Baptist Hospital in Oklahoma City. And they went up through his penis and flushed out all the pus. He was infected, had an infection all over his whole total. His kidneys, his uh, liver, his is uh, everything. Uh, bladder, it, they said he had bladder cancer. And uh, now they, they feel pretty good. He's, he's gone blind to make matters worse. And, and his wife, when she called me yesterday, she said, well, we're looking forward to being able to come up and see you. Wow. Is that, is that blindness reversible, Grandpa? No. Ugh. No, he went for a while with shots in the eyes, but uh, as far as I know, it's not. Mm. I'm the one that should be blind because I've had been a diabetic for 32 years. Yeah, no, that's one of the, you know. I'm, I'm still in my last eye examination. I was, they said that I was 20, 25. My left eye is not what it used to be. Of course, I didn't tell them I had double vision because I went through that once before in Houston and spent a whole bunch of money and didn't do a damn bit of good, so I didn't even broach the subject. Sometimes I have to stop and focus, shut one eye and focus in watching television because I got a double vision. But what do you expect? I'm only 89. 89. That sounds like 1930. Sound about right, Grandpa. Yeah, Phil's birthday was the same time. In 1938. Yeah. 38. Phyllis's was on the same day as mine. 1950. 64. Makes her almost 55. 64 makes her 55. Well, you remember when she was just a baby. Nancy would have been uh, 69 had she lived. 69. I see Elijah Cummings died. Yeah, he was 68. 68. And then Melinda was born in 19... 55. 55, Melinda was born. Yep. Pam in 53. Rory in 59. All the time memory is still pretty good. Yeah, sure is. Short term, but... Melinda was a January baby. Yeah, 26th. January of 55. I accomplished something this morning. When I sat her in a chair, there were two things I wanted to do. That was go put my laundry in the wash machine and wash it. And then I'll come in here and turn the thermostat down because I had it at 80. And if it ain't even with clothes on it, felt a little warm to me, so I turned it down. And I was able to do both those things without forgetting. Hot dog. But uh, last night I went, I 
was out of water, I went to the refrigerator, did something else, then went over there and did something else at the sink. Walked back in there and sat down, and I was still out of water. Yeah. <laughs> Dad blasted. <it. clears throat> well, how's the memory for January of 55? Where were you? Where were you at in January of 55? Is. I was walking down the street by the uh, elk smoker, which is a, a pool hall beer joint. And uh, in what city? Pratt. In Pratt, Kansas. And uh, I was just fully expecting a boy. And after the third child, I was thinking it was sure to be a boy. But. Uh, Boy didn't come along until the fourth child. And Phyllis was supposed to be in twin twin boys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it didn't work out that way. Uh. But she's got a couple of of uh, boys, my grandsons, you know. Yep. What's that, Cody Carson and uh So I guess three, yeah. I've see I screwed up three. Cody Cole and Carson. Cole and Carson. Cole yeah. was getting married on November the 1st. Three. Three young men there. Going to the courthouse to get it done. Pratt, so most of your, all your kids were born in Pratt? Everybody but Nancy. No, Nancy, yeah. yeah. She was born in Fairfax, Missouri. They had a brand new hospital then. About, uh, I'd say about 14 miles from where we live in Rockport. And what do you remember of that, uh, that January 1955 morning when Melinda was born? 1955? Was it 55 when Melinda was born? Melinda was born in 55. Yeah, 55. Yeah. January 55, so it would have been cold. I, I know exactly where I was at. I was in front, I was just left the elk smoker and was in front of the uh, Baron Theater when somebody else hollered at me. They said, you need to call, you need to call home because it's time to have a baby. And uh, so I drove home in the company truck. And sure enough, when Phyllis was born, our good friends, Cecil and Betty Gibson, were over at our house, brought me a big birthday cake. She always had a new pie or new cake anytime you visit her or she would bring you something. Well, anyhow, during the birthday party for me process, all of a sudden, Betty says, well, I gotta go. <laughs> and Phyllis was born that day. Yeah, they do it a little different now. Then. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you knew that uh, Grandma was ready to have a baby, but you were just tending your business and somebody, small town, Ted, we heard it's time, go on home. That's how you got it outside of the oak smoker. Yeah, I, I, I shot a lot of snooker and got, played golf on a snooker table. That's how I made enough money to buy the kids clothes. And you were coming out of there? One time after work, Pocket. I went home and cleaned up and Betty had my supper ready. And she says, well, you better, you better go to the pool hall. <laughs> Didn't you? Said. Damn right she did. Said it's time for you to go and, to the pool hall. And I, I got to be, I got, I got to be a little August, I guess, because uh, I won every day I went down there. And, uh, you know, it's 
twenty-five, thirty-five dollars, and finally they ganged up on me, playing golf. It cost them dearly. That's where uh, you pay so much. A whole. I don't remember now exactly how it worked, but. Uh, Four other players in this team, and uh, they were working for each other to beat me. I almost pulled it out, and that's when I quit. What was your nickname at the time? Because you had a nickname in the hall, right? It was fast. No, no. <laughs> come on, man. No, but. Uh, and I can't remember the guy's name, but one of those, one of those big time pool players came in there one time and challenged me. And uh, he beat me about five games in a row. Here, several years ago, I was watching golf on, or watching the pool on, tape, on TV. And uh, of course they were old, old videos. Can't remember what the guy's name was. He was traveling through the country. I I, I got in another deal one time when I first moved to Houston, down at the dugout where I went in there on Saturday morning and started playing pool with the owner's boys. And two of them, I. I, I didn't let win, so they called the youngest one in, and he, he was the shark. He was about 14, left-handed shooter, and uh, I gave him a lesson or two. And all I, I went all day playing pool and never lost a game. And that evening, some guy came in. I can see him, but I can't think of his name right now. He worked for Fleur. Anyway, he came in and uh, he was a, he thought he was a hot shot. And I beat him three or four games. We played eight ball. And he left and he came back with somebody that was with him. And I've been drinking all day. And I beat the guy. He, he brought this guy back. He thought that he'd find somebody to beat me. But he didn't, and that was that was from like nine o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock in the night. <laughs> you couldn't I go was, down. I was not having any problems with uh, with. Uh, I was real flexible. <laughs> That's I cool. think I was drinking. Uh, Back in those days, you could carry a bottle in a paper bag into the liquor, into the beer hall. Mm. And uh, so I bought a fifth oh, Southern Comfort. I've never drank any more Southern Comfort. Some SoCo. <laughs> and that was the last time you. Put down the Southern Comfort. I, uh, you know, here's some years ago when uh, Beverly, Beverly had her place there, you know, we went to on a regular basis. All the time, yeah. She started a pool, a pool tournament, and I won. I either got first or second for several weeks, about six weeks in a row. And, uh, there was, there was an old guy down there, I said old guy, he'd been in prison. And those guys that are in prison usually are pretty, pretty good pool players. And uh, he, he had a chance to beat me, but he didn't. And, 
and I was actually pulling for them because I got the feeling that they're going to turn on me like they did down in France. Mm. And I, I finally slacked off and quit, and just quit playing. Well, actually, what they got got going, they got a bunch of, from other beer halls. They got a bunch of Mexicans come in and started playing. And of course, when you're playing for money, uh, that can get pretty scary sometimes, especially with with those Mexicans. I'm sure that they all had knives on them. Sure. <laughs> Anyhow. You made it out to make it to 80, they 89. Paid, Beverly paid cash. Whatever. It, it only cost like $5 to get in. And then she matched she matched the whatever amounts it was, depending on how many players. When I first started, we were only about eight or ten players. And uh, she paid cash, you know, for first place and then had a, gave away a pool cue or something like that for second. 